What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scale It Learning channel. And today we are doing an interesting video, a video that I know a lot of people find kind of fun, uh, which is an SAT score reveal. So for those of you who are kind of new to the channel or not sure exactly what's going on, what we're doing today is, sorry, I'm just making sure the audio is good. What we're doing today is we are looking back at my SAT score. So I took the official SAT on October 1st, like everybody else with a bunch of high school students, and it was really fun. And today the scores came out. I got a notification this morning, so it definitely should be out. I've done this once before where I tried to do a live stream and I checked and then it wasn't out and that was a bummer. But I it got the email, so I should have the score. And in true form, I have not looked at it, so this is an official live score reveal. And it's just so funny because uh, regardless, even though I'm doing it again, for my own purposes, just to stay up to date and kind of go through the challenge and all that, I still get nervous. I can't, I can't lie. Like it's just, it is what it is. So uh, I've been kind of nervous thinking about it today because I'm doing it live on camera. So it's a whole thing. It, but anyways, we're gonna just go for it and we're gonna see how I did on the math portion. And then after I check the score, we're gonna go through the entire math section. So I'm gonna go through all the no calculator and calculator questions and just review everyone, sort of like how I always do it. Uh, I'm seeing people got at their October's rescheduled. Uh, their SATs rescheduled. I know people in Florida have it tomorrow, so good luck for those of you there. And um, of course, like this, your test will be different than than the test we're given. I mean, not guaranteed, but I can almost guarantee it has to be the case. Um, I say we just run with it. Let's do this. So you guys just came. You're here. You're on time. Um, oh, Abdul, you're wa normally watch me in double speed. That's funny. <laughs> so this is normal. I still talk fast, right? All right. So let's just get into the mix. Oh, by the way, I want to post a new math puzzle in case you guys like these math puzzles that I do. Uh, what's up, uh, Ale? Um, and if you guys like these math puzzles, so I just posted a new one on my math puzzles channel. So you can click on that link that I just posted. It's a PEMDAS puzzle. I have tons of puzzles on there. If you like that stuff, you know, definitely subscribe. It's just another avenue for basically just people who love math, different types of math problems and all that. So check that out. We're really pushing hard this year to make that channel grow because I think it could be huge for everybody all over the place, for schools, for kids, for adults, just for fun, etc. All right, my friends, let's go for it and let's see what happened. Let's see what went down. Oh boy. All right. So I've signed in as a student, even though, you know, uh, boom, boom, all that stuff is encoded, encrypted. All right. Oh my God. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of moment of truth. I have no idea how I did on the verbal. I thought it was pretty hard. Um, math, math calculator was very difficult. No calculator was pretty smooth. Although I did catch a mistake. Let's see how it worked out. Come on. Oh my God. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. I got a 800 on the math. Awesome. And that's a pretty good verbal score, by the way. I think that tied. Yeah. My last one, I'm happy with that verbal again, the verbal I don't prepare for. And I have people on my team that do the verbal stuff. I teach math cause I love math. That's what I love to teach. That's what I love to work on. Uh, and, and that's kind of what it is. So we got a perfect on the math. That's excellent. And I'm, I'm really happy, really relieved even to see that. So I think that's like six I've gotten. Let's check it out. One, two, five, yeah, six. So six perfect scores. So there's that one little, little, uh, 790 where I got one question wrong. That was a bummer. Um, if you, <laughs> you should see that video cause I did a live score reveal there. So you can see my reaction. I was pretty upset. It was a cone problem that I used the cylinder equation. I'll never forget that. All right. Let's jump into the test. Oh, wait, somebody's at my door. One second. This might be a delivery. Hold on one second, guys. Give me one second. just got a, uh, a package delivered, so I had to sign for it. I figured that was why they knocked. Anyways, okay, let's get into this test, and let's check out what we got going on. We're going to need 
my extension web paint. So then it'll make us reload. All right. See if this works. Come on, come on. I'm sure everybody's trying to access this, right? So let's go to the test questions and we're gonna run through the entire thing. I'm not gonna set a timer because, oh, it's making me reload again. I'm not gonna set a timer. We're just gonna go through and answer everything. I'm kind of curious to see these reading questions that, let me see actually, I'm, I'm kind of curious. So I got only five wrong in reading. That's actually pretty cool because I thought it was really hard. What, I got something wrong on the, I got the first question wrong. Okay, that's a shock. Um, let's see the writing section. I got three wrong. It's so interesting. I always think I got everything right on the writing, like every time. Actually, I will check this out. I'm curious to see what did I get wrong because it always seems to make sense. Um, what is this? If I can check it. 13 was C, enthusiast, not only, and the correct answer is A, enthusiast. They were not only, oh, wait, wait a minute, what? 13, recycling enthusiast. The Dutch recycling enthusiast. Oh, I should have put a comma. Oh, wait, no, it's no change. Oh, yeah, the comma is fine. The Dutch recycling enthusiast. Oh, that's a silly mistake. How did I do that? That's obvious. I don't know. I must have thought that pause made sense as a period. Um, maybe it could have, but I think it was good as was. Let's see this one. 24, and I put B. The answer is D. All right, so to Al-Hadid, these depictions reveal... To Al-Hadid, it... Re oh, you know why it... I mean, I don't even know how I got this wrong. Of course it's not that because the it would be, it would be confused with like, are we talking about Al-Hadid or are we talking about the old masters? So, or, or the, de the depictions, right? So it's a clarification of what does it refer to? So I think that's the issue there. That makes sense. And then 29, let's see this one. <clears throat> What did I put and what did they put? Answer is C. One enchanting piece in delirious matter. It's women among the headless is the similarly drippy lace like putin. Okay, so this one's legitimately hard because I actually, when one enchanting piece in delirious matter is the drippy lace like 14. Like, I still feel like that's okay. Among the among the headless women of delirious matter stands the similarly drippy. Oh, that's why. It's because it says similarly drippy. So what is that referring to in mind? It doesn't refer to anything, right? R among the headless women. So then it's ref that similarly refers to. I think that's why it's right. So I'm not an English expert by any means. Uh, I will defer to my English specialist at uh, my company. But all right, there's my. Oh, wait, what am I doing? We already got it here. Okay, so let's go back and let's go through the entire math section. And that's that. All right, so here we go. Math without calculator. Or math, yeah. And we're just going to step through everything. Okay, so this one, it said the model's ratio between body weight and blah, blah, Based on what is the predicted weight with nine centimeters? So you just go straight here, nine centimeters. You go up. Where does that intersect with? It intersects with seven, I believe, and that is B is the answer. Boom. Okay. Next question. How do I go to the next one? There it is down there. Number two, we've got line segment AC is a length of 120 and contains point B, blah, blah, blah. So we can kind of make our little thing here. A, C, B, and, contain, and it has a length of 120. And then we got AB is this value, BC is that. So the two combined together, right? The two combined together is going to equal that 120. And then you just solve for, oh, wait. And then it just shows the equation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one you didn't even have to solve. So it's the two added together, which should be D. Let's double check. And D is correct. All right, next, this one. What is the solution to the given system of equations? So this is a nice one. They give us a value of X. You can just straight up plug and chug. Y equals four over four, which is just one, plus two, <coughs> excuse me, is three. And we'll double check that. Boom, B 
is correct. Yeah. All right, next, the function is 2x plus 6. What is the graph? So again, we want a y-intercept of 6, which is not here and not here, and a positive slope of 2, so it's got to be a because that's a negative slope, and that is, should be a, and done. Next. Okay. The graph of the quadratic function is shown where this, which the following could be the graph of x plus 2. So what are we doing? We're shifting this whole thing up by 2. This looks like a vertical shift up by 2. This is a shift to the left out, sh flip, no, and this is um, way to the left. So this one is A. I remember uh, somebody was saying that uh, potentially thought it was like a leftward shift. That would be if it was contained within the parentheses. So, for example, this would be X plus 2. That would be a left shift by 2 units. And it's kind of interesting because uh, they've been doing more of these transformation problems, I feel like, lately. Uh, okay, the function is defined by this. What is the value of Q of 6? So, a.k.a. we're plugging in 6 for net for the X. So, that's 6. The negative 1 to an even power. That's just positive 1 times 5 is 5. C is the winner. And that's it. Done. Okay, next to question 6. Which value is the solution to the equation above? We're trying to get 0. So, we don't want a 0 in the denominator because that would be undefined. So, we want this one to 0 out, right? Because to get 0 there, it'd be 4, but you get 0 over 0. No good. But to get zero, we need zero on top. That's a negative two. D is the winner. Done. Yeah. All right. Next, number eight. What is the equation in the graph shown? So it's a quadratic with a vertex of six comma four. So we should see something like x minus six. This is just vertex form plus that four out here. And it's, it's going down, right? So the only one that's possible is here. But we do need that negative in front, even though there's nothing else with the right insides, if you will. So C is the winner. Boom, done. Number eight, nine, sorry. And by the way, I'm going to do this again once the PDF comes out. I'll also do another version where I step through and, and time myself and all that. But this is just kind of, we're just going through it. Uh, these two are similar. What is the measure of A, D, E? So it already says that, you know, we can see how it corresponds. But A, B, C, A, B, C corresponds to A, D, E, kind of in that order, right? So if it says that the measure of ABC is 60, of course, ADE corresponds with that. So it's also going to be 60. And that's it. Corresponding angles. Next, we've got the graph model's relationship between area of rainforest, blah, blah. There's a predicted number of flowering plants. Uh, which equation represents? Oh, so we're just getting up the equation that represents this relationship. So what you can do here, what I like to do is I like to choose two points and calculate the slope. This avoids the potential mistake where you might not look at the units, right? You might just be like, oh, it's going up one or I don't know, up three over four or something like that, right? But you have to be mindful of the units. So we got two coordinates, zero, zero, which is excellent. And then we got 40 and that looks like 15,000. So obviously minus the zero, it's 15,000 minus zero is 15,000 over 40 minus zero, which is 40, cancel. 1,500 divided by four. My trick to do that mentally is half, half, right? Dividing by four, you take half, half again. So that's 750 and 375. B is the winner with the right slope, boom, and done. Next is number 10. Number 11, excuse me. Wait, did I do 10? Was that 10? Yeah. All right, halfway. Um, which equation especially okay so this is just straight up isolating quantities question don't worry about anything just isolate n so I'm gonna first um, multiply everything by n that's n. I don't know if this is the most efficient way but whatever it's what's coming to my mind 3n I'm gonna subtract 3n from both sides right we get 2 then I'm gonna factor out n from these two uh, uh, monomials expressions whatever and then we divide both sides by P minus 3. Boom. N equals 2 over P minus 3. C is the winner. Let's make sure that's right. And C is the winner. Yeah. All right. Number 12. The system has no soluciones, which means it the value of P, these lines have to be parallel and different y-intercepts. They already have different y-intercepts, so the slopes must be the same, a.k.a. P must be 3. And this is now we're getting into some, it's saying medium difficulty. Um... All right. 
which of the following is equivalent to this expression? Distribute, distribute. Square roots multiply each other, but a square root times itself destroys the square root, so it's just x plus radical, and then the x and the y co-mingle because they're multiplying and they're both under the radical. So it's x plus x, y, the, the square root of x, y. The reason what I say is like, hey, this is like a prison, right? So if you're multiplying, the prisoners interact, the outside people interact, but that's it. There's no mixing in between. So this is our final answer, which is going to be A. And that's it. Yeah. All right. Number 14. Joe's asked to memorize 200 vocabulary words. He used the on memorization. On day, on day one, he remembered all 200 words. On day two, he remembered 10% fewer. So this is how I did it. I didn't even bother coming up with an equation. Okay, what's 10% less than that? That's 180 because 10% of 200, 20, right? And then on the... On the thir third day, it's 20%, or sorry, it's 10% less than this. 10% is an easy calculation because you just move the decimal over once, right? So 10% of that is 18. So if I'm taking 18 away, on the third day, that's going to be 162, which is B. And that's it. And 15, and that's why playing graphics. Okay, what's the length of the radius? So we, this is not in standard form, unfortunately. So you have to do this whole crazy thing. You have to group the y's, group the x's, and then get that constant over here. And then you have to complete the square, right? So what's you take half of the b term, square it, which is positive 64. Half of that b term, which is 2, square it, is 4. And I'm adding those 64 and the 4. Since I'm adding them to the left side, I must add them to the right side, right? Then this once now becomes a perfect square trinomial that we can factor as x minus 8 squared. That's why they call it completing the square. Then we have a perfect trinomial here that's y minus 2 squared and then this equals 96 plus 4 beautiful which is 100 right and uh oh wait 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 did i make a mistake oh that's negative 32 oh because i was like whoops oh no what did i just do what is this okay get rid of this okay sorry that's negative 32 my bad um lucky saved by the fact that there's answers here and i was like oh it should be 10 but it wouldn't be so negative 32 plus 64 is positive 32 plus 4 is 36. so the radius is the square root of this which is six the vertex happens to be at eight comma two but they're not asking about that but that's why you see this answer and this answer so just make sure you're answering what they're what they want which is b um and that's that all right now we go to the free response positive value of x that satisfies this. I'm going to tell you it's just 32 because you know 2 times 32 is 64. Absolute value of that is 64. There's a negative 32, but we only want the positive values on the free response. 32, boom, done. Number 17, the equation, what is the slope that is parallel? Well, it's going to have the same slope. It's got a slope of 7, so the answer is 7. And let's check the answer. 7 is correct. Boom, done. And number 18, we got this. What is the value of 3p? So we solve for p. I don't like fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by 3, and I get 2p plus 12 equals 3 times 10 is 30. Subtract 12 from both sides, and I get 18. Divide by 2, and I get 9. But now they want 3p. Oh, this is the one that I got wrong, and I caught it. No, wait. Is this the one I got wrong? Yeah, I'm positive. This is the one. This is the one. I had nine entered, and then when I went back and checked, right, because I checked this section like a bunch of times, when I went back and checked, it said, oh, it's 3P. Oh, my God, the answer's 27. So I fixed it, but that was really lucky where I caught. But, not again, not lucky in the sense because, like, I'm always going to check my stuff, right, as you should, and you'll catch these things. That's how you improve. All right, 19. We got this, boom, boom, boom. So what is the value of D? All right, I remember this problem too. So there, this is a hard problem. This, I know people were saying the no calculator was very easy, et cetera, but this was actually a tough one. So you could just foil everything out, right, and figure out D, which is in front of the X squared. But if you, take, if you maybe just see like, hey, I don't have to do all that work because that's going to be X to the fifth. I don't care about that. That's going to be an X to the fourth. I don't care about that. That's going to be an X to the third. I don't care about that. But then I got negative 6X times X. That's going to be an X squared. I do care about that. And then I got 5 times 3X squared. That's going to be a 15X squared. I care about that. I don't care about the 5 times X. So these are my x squared values, a.k.a. my d values. Negative 6 plus 15 is 9x squared. So 9 is the answer here, and that was correct. Last but not least, we come to question 20. Oh, yeah, this one was fun, too. It's a Pythagorean triple, so I'm not going to go through and read everything, but they said this is a right angle 
If you remember your Pythagorean triples from my from my video on the 23 essential formulas, uh, formula Bible, this is an 8. It's an 8, 15, 17. If you don't, you're going to have to do Pythagorean's theorem without a calculator, which isn't the end of the world, but it's x squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. Whatever, it's fine. Then we want tangent of x. So you got to memorize tangent, which is opposite 8 over adjacent 15. So 8 over 15 for the win. Boom, done. And let me double check that that is the correct answer. Yeah. All right. So that's that. So we got the no calculator section done and reviewed. And like I said, I'm going to do another video where I go through it time so you can see that whole process. I, this should be out in, I don't know exactly, but as soon as it's out, I got you. Okay. Math with calculator. And we're going to hit these three, two, one. Let's go. What is f of eight? So again, this is a, sorry, this is a plug and chug situation, function notation. f of eight means whatever the variable is, x here, I'm replacing it with eight. You can use a calculator, but it doesn't matter. I'll load one if I need, I can do this mentally. 80 plus 56 is 136 plus 13 is 149. Boom, right, just plug and chug. D is the winner. All right, I'm just gonna write the letter because it always moves when I do that. So the shaded region shown is an equality which is fine, order pairs solution. So it's whatever is in the gray area, right? So five, zero, that one is legit. I'll put A. Um, zero, five, that is not in the shaded area. Negative five, zero, definitely not. Zero, negative five, definitely not. So A is the winner and we got them. Next, oh, my back's hurting, hold on. Whoa move this in okay so we got this painting and it's 21 by 30 and we got this larger scale blah 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 where we're increasing the length and the width which of the following is the best interpretation of x x is your scale factor right it's like what we're doing how much by what factor by what multiplier are we increasing both the length and the width so i like to always answer it first before i look at the answer choices this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense, right? Length of the replica is X inches great. Because they're saying greater. That to me implies addition. Okay, the area of the... Re no, it's not that because it's actually X squared. Okay, and I'll, I'll go th through Y in a second. But see, this is what it is. The measure of each side of the replica. That's my scale factors, X times. So C is the winner. Let me put a little C there. So C is the winner and that's it. So when you actually multiply this out, it's 21 times 30, which is the original area times X squared. So you see the area is actually X squared times the original. So that's why D is wrong. All right, it's extended. We want the value of Y, AKA this angle. So look, we got some really good stuff here. That's 40, that's 90. That adds up to 130. Triangle sum theorem says that my X therefore is 50 because all the angles have to add up to 180. And then y is supplementary uh, to 50 because they are a linear pair on a straight line. Again, you don't need to know that terminology, but you got to know that that is a concept that you need to know. That means y is 130. Now, check it out. They have 50 here, and 50 is my x value. They're not asking about x. They're asking about y. That's why you got to underline that last part of the, sec of the question. So c is the winner, and done. Next. Five. Dakota and Alex were babysitters, blah, blah, blah. Or they'll babysit four children for the same amount of time. They charge the same. Oh, wait, I should read this more carefully. The code charges 10 per hour plus five for travel expenses. Um, Alex charges eight per hour plus four per child. So they have different basing for the same time. Okay. If they charge the same amount for their respective dollars. So they're charging the same amount and, and it's four kids. So my number of kids is four. So that's it. I made an equation. I plug and chug and I do my thing. 8 plus 16, that's 24 equals 10x plus 5. Wait, did I make a mistake? Hold on. Plus $4 per child. I have different values for this. Oh, the same amount of time. Oops. Not the same amount of money. Excuse me. So that's incorrect. But it, but it is it is still four children. I just can't set these equal to each other. So it's like this and then the same amount of time. How many hours for, for the same amount of time? They, oh, no, it is the same amount. Wait a minute. Did I set this up right? 10x. Oh, $10 per hour plus a flat fee of $5 for travel expenses. 16. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then we solve for x. Sorry. What am I doing? So then we've got subtract 8x from both sides. That's 2x. And then subtract 5 from 16. That's 11. And you divide by 2 and you get 
5.5. I believe that's the answer, right? Yes, yeah, C. Sorry, got a little confused there. All right, Dakota and Alex, blah, blah, blah. Dakota charges $10 per hour. Wait, is this? Oh, it's five and six. Oh, we got that. And then Alex charges eight per hour plus four per child. Which grass shows they should be, to, and they want Dakota. So uh, that makes sense because that's more of a linear equation. This is technically like a second variable with a Y or whatever. Um, so we want a slope of five and a Y intercept of 10. Wrong Y intercept, wrong Y intercept. No, 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 I did it backwards. Oh my God, I'm making mistakes, apologize. That was the flat fee, this was the slope. So no Y intercept, that's the right Y intercept, right Y intercept, and then, so it's B or C, and then which one has the right slope? Probably one of them. So slope of 10, so it's going up 10 over one, up 10 over one, right? I'm looking at the markings. This one goes up 15 over one, so it's B. And let's double check, yeah, B. B is the winner, seven. So line L is a slope of negative three, and that is my x-intercept. What is the y-intercept? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with y equals negative three x plus B, and I wanna find the y-intercept. Well, I have points here that I can plug and chug with, right? So I plug in zero, and I get nine halves times negative three. I can use a calculator, but whatever. Negative 27 over two plus B. So you see the y-intercept. When I isolate B is 27 over two, which is D. Boom. Okay, eight. Uh, the table of those are thought, okay. What is the range? So range is from the smallest to the biggest. So it's 72.2 minus 3.7, which is five and eight and six, 68.5, done. C. All right, good. Next, number nine. Uh, new data with removed by, wait, is formed by removing the data for National River. What is this one? Okay. How does the mean compare to the original? Well, if you remove the max value, obviously the mean is going to go down, right? Because this is, this is the max. So whatever the mean, I could, I could calculate it if I want to, but you don't even need to. But let's see, seven, eight, 80.2. 91.8 or something. I don't know. So it's around 25. You remove this. Now we're down to like around, what is that? Three. That's about 18. So it's like at six, like it drops so drastically. So anyways, um, the, the mean is going down, which is B, right? Just like if you remove the smallest value, the mean would go up unless the smallest value is the mean, right? And they're all equal. All right, the mass Y is blah, blah. Which graph represents the relationship? So a slope of 5.6, a Y-intercept of negative 324, but they don't have the Y-intercept on any of these. Oh, wait, this one they do. So that's wrong. And it's also a positive slope. That's a negative slope. That's wrong too. So it's one of these two. And then which one goes up? It has a slope of 5.6. Let's see. Hmm, how can I test this quickly? So it's going from here, we'll do these two points, I guess, 60 and two. So that looks like God, 60, maybe 10, right? Cause it's, it's 50, a hundred, et cetera. So I'm just kind of guesstimating. And then this is 100 comma, maybe 230. So this has a slope of, if I subtract down negative 220, I'll just make it positive cause they'll both be negative over 60 minus hundred is 40. So that looks like five, 0.5, so it's probably A, let's just do quickly here, it's definitely wrong, but um, we'd have 60 comma, 670, I'm estimating, and then this is 120, 870, I guess, 100, 870. So this has a slope of 200 over, oh wait, it's pretty similar. 200, so the slopes are actually comparable. So we're just gonna have to plug and chug. Um, if I plug in, uh, let's see, I'm trying to do this without a calculator just for fun. So if I plug in 100 here, that's 560 minus 324. So 560 minus 324, that's 632. So I should get 236, which is this one. So it's gotta be A, yeah. All right. I don't even remember doing this or like how I did this one on the test, but maybe I used the calculator to be honest. All right, the scout the scout plot shows the relationship between two variables. Next one. 
how many data points is the line of best fit predict a greater y value than the actual y value meaning for how many points is the line of best fit above it one two three four. Uh oh what just happened did it just log me out oh did i click something What the heck just happened? That was weird. Okay, that was weird. Maybe because I was signed in for too long or something. Um, let's go back to this and we'll go to the test questions. All right, here we go. What was I on? I think I was on 10, right? Yeah, did that one. All right, let's go to 11. Oh, no, we did this one. I said this was four, I think, right, which is C, and that's correct. All right, 12. It's perpendicular. So when we have a perpendicular slope, it's the opposite res What? Why is it making me redo this? Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, somebody asked if I'm going to post this. Yeah, all these videos get posted automatically. So it will be posted. And I'm going to add timestamps and all that good stuff. All right. So this should be four, which is C, and we're good. Next is this one. So it's opposite reciprocal, right? So we're trying to get the opposite reciprocal of two, which is negative one half, which is A. All right. This one, in a certain country population of 250 million, 160 were internet users, 90 million were not. So internet, not internet, 160, 90. The adult population that used the internet, 52.8, had two or more social media. The adult population in this country in 2015 was 77% of the total population. Um, so we want to get the total. So the, the adult population. So 250 was 77% of the total population. Oh, I remember this problem. Yeah. So like this internet and non-internet was really not used, but I still put it like this. I remember this and I, I'm pretty sure when you divide, it becomes 320, which I think is like about the population of the U S I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Cause I, I remember that one pretty vividly. I don't know why. All right. 14. Oh, same thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. But this part might use that information. So let me bring it back up. Okay, so then it says, what fraction of the adult users in this country, so the adult users, oh, there's 160, what fraction of the adult internet users had access to or more social media? So it was this. Um, and then, 52.8, wait, it didn't, is this an approximation? Hold on one second. I guess I'll just use a calculator. I can't remember. So it's calculator. I should be able to do this in my head. It's about one third. It should be B, but I'll just do it just to be safe. 52.8 divided by 160. Yeah, so it's, it's 33, which is B. Yeah. All right, next. What is the value of x plus 9? This is a great one to substitute, right? Because we don't actually want to solve for x plus 9. We, I mean, for x, we want to just get x plus 9, which I can replace with y. And then I solve for y. So then subtract 9y from both sides. y equals 25. And then you plug it back in to double check. 10 times 25 is 250. 9 times 25 is 225. Plus 25 is 250. Boom, done. C is the winner. Yeah. All right, number 16. But I just like a sample of adult carbon, blah, blah, blah. The mean for the butterfly sample is 1.5. Margin of error is one centimeter, so it can go as low as 0.5, as high as 2.5, right? That's how we apply margin of error. 
has, has oh this is that, that people were asking me about this you want to get a smaller margin of error you need a larger sample okay that's basically it because you imagine as the sample size goes to the entire population the margin of error shrinks to zero so that's the way to think about it they, like if you survey everybody in the u.s about their voting preferences there's not going to be a margin of error unless people you're assuming people tell the truth right so you got all the information there's no margin of error all right done the ratio of the diameter of a circle to its circumference is one to pi. Well, circumference also equals diameter times pi, right? So the ratio of a circle, of, a cir of, a, of the diameter of a circle, so if I, um, one over pi is equal to diameter divided by C, right? So the, and literally, this is what I just showed. This is all, this is always the case. So if the, right, if the, so this is just true for circles. If the diameter of the circle is multiplied by three, how will the circle change? Well, to keep the ratio the same, we're gonna have to triple the circumference. Otherwise the ratio, you know, the ratio is the ratio. So it will be multiplied by three. I remember this problem too, C. It's a hard problem because it's abstract. And again, now we're seeing how difficult the calculator was. In the figure shown, all angles formed by adjacent sides or right angles. What is the perimeter? Oh yeah, this one was I thought was tough. But most of my students felt like pr this was pretty straightforward, right? But I'll show you how I did it. I was like, on this side, that's 11, okay? So on the other side, um, that's also going to be 11, right? So now I'm talking about this and all of this. Then we're talking about the length coming this way. So and I'll do a different color. Oh, no, it's fine. So then I got 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. So that's 10. Then I've got this whole segment of 7. Then I've got another 2.5 because that's 2.5 and that's 5. So that's another 2.5. And then we just need this little distance here, which is, hold on, 5. So it's 2.5, 9.5, right? Because this is 2.5, which is this distance. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is 2.5, that's 7. So this is 4.5, right? So that's that segment. And then now we can do it. So this is 7 plus 7 is 14 plus that is 24 plus 22. And that's 46. I remember that that was what I got on the test. So anyway, I thought it was hard, but I don't know if everybody agreed. The table show the tables show the frequency of data, blah, blah. Which thing best compares the mean and standard deviation? So again, if you look at the values, okay? I mean, look at the frequencies. They're identical, identical frequencies. But then these values are lower than these. I already know my mean for Q is bigger, right? Wait, this isn't showing everything. Oh, there's something wrong with this because it's supposed to say that like A is the mean of P and B is the mean of Q or something like that, right? Oh, it does say the mean A and standard deviation B of data set P. So that's A and B and that's mean. And then for Q, it's it's C and D, right? C and D. There it is. Should be, it's italicized. That's why I didn't recognize it. And then, so this is mean and this is standard deviation. So of course the standard deviations are equal because look at the spread, look at the frequencies. It's still spread the exact same out because these are all, it's sort of like identical. It's just shifted up. So the spread doesn't change. So B and D, the standard deviations are equal. But then the question is, which mean is bigger? Of course, Q is bigger because it has bigger values, even though they're all spread out like in the same way. So what is the mean here? C. C is greater than A, which is B. Hard question, but if you understand conceptually those differences, it works. The circle shown is set of negative 1, 1. The line tangent, blah, blah, is at 4, negative 3, which is fine. Okay, I remember doing this one too. Again, hard question. God, this is a really hard test. So... I know that if I draw a radius out here, it's perpendicular because it's tangent. It's, it's wherever, whatever line it intersects that's tangent, it's going to be perpendicular to that radius. So I can come up with the slope of line T, which is what I want to do. Because the slope of the radius is negative 3 minus 1, right? Difference of the y's over 4 minus negative 1, difference of the x's. So that's negative 4 over 5, which means 
the slope of line t is the reciprocal 5 fourths. And then I can do point slope, generate my equation for the line, y minus that y value equals slope times x minus that. And now I have an equation to plug all the stuff in. I'm going to put it in point slope just because it's easier to plug in um, these different x values. 5 fourths x and then 5 fourths times negative 4 is negative 5. So it's a negative 5, but I'm going to subtract 3, so it's minus 8. I'm doing a little quick, right? So we got this nice equation. If I plug in 0 for x, I don't get 5 fourths. If I plug in 3, I know I'm getting a fraction. Um, it's going to be something where I uh, – it's going to be this one probably. If I plug in 8, 5 fourths times 8 is 10 minus 8 is 2. So it's got to be C. But that's it. Come up with the equation of the line. C is correct. Come up with the equation of the line. Plug and chug. Do your thing. And that's that. 21. System. All right. We want the system of equations. Look how beautiful this is because we just want y. And they're already set up beautifully for elimination. Add them together. I get 2y. The x's cancel out. Equals 6 plus 9, which is 15. Divide by 2. And we get 7.5 for the win. Boom. Done. Yes. All right. Next. 22. 618 gray wolves, which cover an area of this, which is finally supposed to estimate population density. Wolves per square mile. This is beautiful language. Whenever I see wolves per something, I say wolves per, that's a synonym for divide, right? Wolves per square mile. Let's see if I can do this without a calculator. Well, it's obviously less than one, so it's got to be A. Um, I think I did check it on my calculator on the test. Probably. I'm sure I did just cause I always am safe, but all right, then how many X intercepts does this have? Well, guess what? It's got one here at zero, right? Whatever X intercept is where we hit the X axis, AKA where it zeros out the function. We've also got another one at four. It does have a multiplicity of two, but we don't care about that. And then I have another one at five multiplicity of three. So technically, right, it's a six degree function, hence giving that. But they just said how many x-intercept, meaning concrete points where it hits the x-axis. One, two, three. B is the winner. And done. 24. Effective as mineral specimen, botanist contain 1,000, blah, blah, blah. Seeds were obtained from two, 500. I remember this question. So here's the deal. I'll tell you the situation. You have two bags of seeds. They put one in one study, one in the other. That's a problem, right? Because what if there were some minor differences in the bags or maybe major differences? It, it's not now a randomly assigned study. And that's at the core of every good study in statistics. So what we'd have to do is do a random assignment. Half of the seeds should be randomly assigned to each soil type. And that's going to give us a much better read of the actual effectiveness of the difference or the differences in the soil. So B is the winner, done. 25. Researchers estimated that this by mass, blah, blah, blah. What is the mass in grams? This is a straight percentage question. So again, it's 0 0.07, but to do 0.07% of 12, we, we turn into a decimal equivalent, meaning move the decimal over twice and then do your thing. Um, you can do this, actually, you can do this in your head. It's 84. Uh, 7 times 12 is 84, and then I move the decimal over 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And it was just a matter of the zeros, you know, where to where to place them. But A is the winner. That's it. So just a straight-up percentage question. Next, population can be modeled by blah, 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 blah. Which of the following best models is this, where N represents the number of years after 1995? So this is starting in 1990, okay? So in, wait, 1995. Five, it's like the same thing as this. 0 0.066. Well, let me just make sure I'm doing this right. It would be T plus 5. Yeah, so then now I plug in 0, and it's like 1995. So we can just straight up get this answer. Oh, they used N, by the way, so I'll just change this to N. Or wait. Yeah, because zero is going to represent the same. Because the if we keep the equation the same, it's going to be zero would still represent uh, 1995 because you plug in zero. It's like the original equation to the fifth, and to the fifth for the original would be 1995. But they didn't give us this answer, right? So if I remember correctly, this is the answer. And the reason why is because you can use a little exponent rules, right? 1.066. And then since these are addition for exponents, it's the same as multiplication of the bases like this. Because if I multiply them together, it'd be 5 plus n. They sh shifted the order, but that's that. Again, the other way to test this 
if you plug in zero, right, we should get the same thing as if we plug in five here, which we do, because zero, that would go away. So D is the winner, and that, or wait, did I pick D or C? Oh, what did I do? Oh, shoot, I didn't see something. It is C, sorry. I said D, and it's C, but I, I, the, I'll show you the difference. See this? I, I missed that little five there. So that little five shouldn't be there. I don't, I totally ignored that. But yeah, that doesn't change. It's this that changes, you see? So yeah, sorry about that. C is the winner. All right, next, 27. In the given equation, C is a constant in the equation of exactly two distinct real solutions. All right, so what does that mean? Well, as soon as they go quadratic and as soon as they say number of solutions, we're talking about discriminant. Discriminant is B squared. That's the six, right? A, B, C minus four. A is one, one times x squared. C is C, and this has to be greater than zero. Now we just solve. So we got 36 minus four C is greater than zero. Negative four C is greater than negative 36. Divide by a negative, we flip the inequality. C has to be less than nine. Say is hard, but if you know the discriminant, that's it. Boom, done. Next is 28. Let's determine the country of the decided plot shows which equation is most appropriate for the line of best fit. So again, you kind of draw your line of best fit. Um, it looks like the way I drew it, no y-intercept, but all of them have a y-intercept. It's probably one of the lower ones. 90 is definitely wrong for the y-intercept because I'd be up here. 10 is probably wrong too. I mean, you could make an argument for it, but maybe, maybe not. All right. Now the question is the slope, right? Because this has a drastically different slope. So if I look at what I drew, it's like going up by 40. I'm just using approximation here. Up by 40 over by 0.4. So 40 over 0.4, which is a slope of, that'd be like 10, but move the decimal over 100. So what? Oh, got it. So slope of 100. That's the slope of 1.5. Nope, that's the slope of 10. Nope, this is the closest, 90x, you see? So A has got to be the winner. Um, and then you can quickly plug in like a half. I don't know. That's 45 plus 1.5. That's pretty close to what we mapped. So it's got to be A. Let's check and correct. Next. 29. Piece of paper is cut two times. Oh, no. Cut two. I remember this one. Cut two times resulting in three smaller pieces of the same size. Then the smaller pieces are stacked and cut two times to make nine. All right, this process continues. The pieces are too small, which the line gives the number of pieces of paper. All right, so after C cuts, so two cuts, and I, watch how I do this. Piece of paper are three. Four cuts, right? Now, because then it'll be four, you can already tell this is two levels now because I stacked them. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. I got two values, two coordinates. Wait, did I do that right? Because I cut it. No, no, no. Sorry. It's three levels. Excuse me. <laughs> Made a mistake. It's nine. Because I cut it into three pieces. So I go one, two, three. And then I go boom, boom, boom. Or sorry, boom, boom. And then this becomes three pieces, six pieces, nine pieces. It doesn't matter. The drawing doesn't matter, I'm saying. But now I have two values. So when C is two, P should be three. When C is four, P should be nine. Which one does it work for? Plug and chug. Two, I get three. Four, I get nine. A is looking good. Two, I get one plus two. Nine. This is out. Two, I get something crazy. Three to the fourth is 81. Out. This is even crazier. I plug in two for C. That's three to the fifth, which is 243. So it's got to be A. But you see how nicely the these little values work in terms of breaking those down. Next. There are 640 acres in one square. I remember this question. It's increasing at a rate of one acre per decade, which the area is increasing in square kilometers per decade. All right. I think, what did I do for this one? Um, one, oh yeah, and it doesn't even give the miles. So it gives, or square miles, it gives that, which is annoying. So how did I do this? I said it's increasing by one acre. So one acre is the same as one over 640 square miles, right? So by one 640th. And I want to combine, I want to turn this into, um, into square kilometers. I think this is what I did. So then I was like, all right, well, if it's increasing by that much in square miles, like I just, I think I came up with values. I don't remember, but let's just say mm, one over 
20 and 1 over 32. So that's like a square. This is in miles, right? So this is what I like to do because they gave us the kilometer to mile, not square kilometer, square mile. So if I go to this, okay, and I want to convert this to kilometers, I this is a mess because decimals and all this stuff, but um, we're going to change this into kilometers by dividing both sides by 0.62. That's how we're going to, we got our equation. So I'm going to divide <clears throat> by 0.62 to get my equivalent kilometer values. So we'll say 120th divided by 0.62. So this side becomes now 0 0.08 approximately. Um, and then 132, 132 divided by 0.62 is 0 0.05. So then to get the square kilometers that's increasing by 0 0.05 times 0 0.08, again, it's approximate, but it's 0 0.004, which is D. I feel like I did it differently. I, I can't remember how I did it now, but anyways, that's one way to do it. All right, now we got to 31. Now we're on the free response. How many paddle boats were counted on the lake at 2 p.m.? Do, 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 seven. That's it, just reading the graph. So they call it easy. So it's, you know, still got to be careful. Company spent a total of 9,000 on digital and print. The ratio of money spent on digital to print was one to three. So immediately I'm writing this down. How much money did they spend on digital ads? So it's a, so I could say one X and three X, right? And then I'm trying to solve for X. So X plus three X equals my total ad budget. If I solve for X, I'm good to go. Four X equals 9,000. Divide by four, X equals two, two, five, zero for the win and done. Number 33, a solution to the given equation is blah, blah, blah. What is the value of K? Um, oh, well, this obviously reminds us of the quadratic formula. So we plug it in. So we get B squared, which is four, A, B, C, minus, I mean, sorry, minus B squared, minus what am i doing oh my god i just totally did the quadratic formula wrong that's funny i'm i was doing the discriminant sorry it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared which is four minus four a c ah i did it again i was so close to being done okay log me out let's see if i can get back in come on stop doing this Hey, you're very welcome. Um, my test is tomorrow. I want to know if getting 80% of the questions right is good. Yes, yeah, great. I mean, again, people ask me these type of questions. It depends so much on your goals, on what colleges you want to apply to, on your starting point. Like all these different things are how you can determine if you're reaching what you want to reach. So it's not the same for everybody. So I get that question all the time. This is a good score. So it's relative, right? All right. I think it was this one, right? 33. Okay. Back to the quadratic formula. I wonder if it's going to make me do this again. Let's try. Yep. Oh God. I don't know why that does that. It like kicks. It doesn't like that extension for some reason. Let's try it again now. 33. Oh no, no, no. That's reading. Okay, so we've got this and we've got um, A. Ooh, sorry. Why isn't that working? Uh-oh, it's not working now. That's weird. Hmm. Doesn't like this extension, huh? I don't think it's going to work now. Ah, bummer. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can do a quick work around here. Let's go to Miro and I'll see if I can write my work up top. Okay. So we've got negative b plus or minus square root of b squared which is 4 minus 4 a c all over 2 a 2 times 1 is 2 so that's negative 2 plus or minus that's 4 plus 4 which is square root of 8 over 2 
And then we simplify, because I can reduce square root of eight, that is two red two, right? Because it's four times two. And then we got negative one plus or minus red two, divide everything by two. So the value in the square root, which is k, is two. That's where we get that negative one is that minus one there. Um, and that's it. Okay, 34. We've got this one. Okay, function C gives temperature of Celsius, corresponds to a temperature of Fahrenheit, blah, blah, blah. If a temperature increased by 19.8, so this is what I did for this one. I'll show you what I did. So I started with zero for Fahrenheit. Oh, no, 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 I did not. I started with 32 for Fahrenheit. That gives a Celsius of zero. If a temperature increased by 19.8, so then I was like, all right, and this is calculator anyway, so 19.8, that's basically like 20, right? So it's 51.8. So I was like, now if it goes from 32 to 51.8, how much did the Celsius increase? So all I got to do is plug in 51.8, and I get my answer. So 51.8 minus 32 is that times 5 ninths, and it goes up by 11. So that's it. 11 is the answer. Boom. Next, 35. Uh, let's get rid of this. It's not working. Figure shows two rectangles. What is the probability that's within the shaded region? So this is just a straight up area probability question. So the probability, so we know it's within the shade in the figure. So if it's if a point within the figure, so that's a total area of 35. What's the probability that's in the shaded region? The shaded region is 35 minus that white rectangle, which has an area of 15. So that's 20 over 35. Divide everything by five. That's four over seven, like this. Four sevenths. Boom. Done. 36, in the given equation, Q is a constant. The equation has no solution. What is the value of Q? So there's no solution, um, meaning da, 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 that the X is, I don't remember this one, but, oh, I mean, I know what it is. It's got to be 9 24 because if we're getting no solution, we should get like something, the X is going away and then something equaling something else, if that makes sense. So the way to think about it is if the X, if these terms cancel out, I get zero equals 36, which is not good. So if I do nine 24, which is the same as three eighths, watch what happens. So Q is three eighths, three eighths times 24 and then times X. And then this is negative nine X. Well, three eighths of 24 is divided by eight. That's three times three is nine. So nine X and negative nine X, that gives you zero. So zero does not equal 36, so three-eighths should be the winner. Done. 37, the value of R is 21, 20 over 21. The value of R, oh, watch this, watch this. The value of R is 20 over 21 times the value of T, where T is greater than zero. The value of T is what percent greater? The value of T is what percent greater than the value of R? Um, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then so you just isolate. So you multiply both sides by 21 over 20, and then you get, um, that's, it's 5%. Because 21 over 20 is 105 over 100. So that's it. Five, boom. Yes, this is the, I was literally just thinking, I'm like, where did this crazy problem go? This is the craziest problem on the test. This is the one I wanted to do with you guys. So this is insane. All right, I'm going to show you how to do it. So two numbers, A and B, are greater than zero. And four times the square root of A is equal to nine times the cube root of B. There's my equation. I start with that always. If... A is two-thirds. Well, that's nice. For what value of A to the X is equal to, for what value of X is A to the X equal to B? All right, so we get this crazy thing. And uh, we're going to have to solve, obviously, for B, which we can do. So check this out. Uh, nine cube root of B. All right, so how do we solve for B here? Okay, so... First, I'm going to divide both sides by 9. I mean, we'll do – actually, is this how I did it? I, I think I did it um, – uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Okay, so check this out. Uh, the I think a nice way to do this is this is really 4 times 2 thirds. It's the same thing, right? 
but that's to the one half power. Should I do it this way? Nah, I'm just gonna roll with it. Okay, so instead I'm gonna divide. I'm gonna do what I was gonna do originally here. I can't exactly remember how I did it, but I think I used fractional ex rational exponents instead of this. But divide both sides by nine. So four ninths times two thirds. Let me make more room. Equals the cube root of b. All right. Then I'm gonna cube both sides. So then I get b equals four ninths rad two three to the third power. So it's not pretty, but I got my b value. But we can make this look a lot nicer. So th four to the third power is 64. Again, you can use a calculator. Nine to the third power, 81, 729. And then rad two to the third power. So rad two thirds, rad two thirds, that's gonna be two thirds. And then another rad two thirds says third power. So you have one left over like this. Um, yikes, wait, this is, B. oh, yeah, 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 okay, so then this is 128 over 2160, 2187, all right, 2187, rad 2, rad 3 equals B, so terrible, right, but then we bring it back here, and we said, for an A, if A is two-thirds, so then we say, Two thirds to what power is this crazy thing? 128 to 187. Yikes, right? Well, luckily we have a calculator on this, but I know 128 mentally, like I have that memorized and I, I'll take it from there with this. Look, I got two on the top, I got three on the bottom. Two to what power is 128? That's to the seventh. How do I remember that? I don't know why, but I remember two to the fifth is 32. Two to the sixth, therefore, is that doubled 64. Two to the seventh is 128. And square root of two is to the one half power. Over 2187 happens to be three to the seventh. Coincidence? I think not. And you can double check that. Um, let's, you can do it mentally, honestly, if you don't have a calculator, but if you, because sometimes I know students take the calculator without a calculator, just certain situations, but watch this. 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, uh, that's all I have memorized, and then it's 729, that's 6. Um, 729, well, it's obviously 2187, but that's 729, so that's 2100, yeah, and then 3 times 29 is 87. So there we go, so that's the seventh power, so we just proved it mentally. And then of course, square root of three is three to the one half. And then we add the exponents. So on top, we get two to the 7.5. On the bottom, we get three to the 7.5. So if I raise two thirds simultaneously to 7.5, we're, go we're good. And that gives me my answer, 7.5. And that's it, we're done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we want to go over in today's test. And let me see. Yeah, so that's it. That's the recap. For those of you guys who joined late, this is the score reveal. Did it live on camera. We got an 800 in math, 750 in the verbal. It is what it is for the verbal. Uh, seems like that's about where I'm constantly getting without any prep. So maybe I'll do some prep and try and get that, get that perfect score. Um, I got 700 set to 750. That's awesome. Last problem in calculator, you put four ninths as two thirds squared. Yes. Yeah, you could put, that's even better. I like it. I like that a lot. That would have made it e way easier. Um, Danielle, I wish you the best of luck. I'm sorry to hear that you were in the, in that situation, but um, you know, that's a bummer, uh, but good, good luck tomorrow. And yeah, it will almost certainly be different. We'll probably not be released, all that stuff. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking for a while. So I'm gonna call the day, and this is it. This is my Friday, so I have no more tutoring left. Um, chilling. This is kind of like where I go and unwind and have fun with my friends. So, oh, and by the way, I got a week in the life video coming out. If you haven't, uh, or if you're interested in it at all, that hopefully will be out by Monday. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you do like this video, please click that like button. It helps the channel tremendously when you do hit the like button, believe it or not, with that engagement numbers. It's, I can see it impacting sort of the reach we're getting, which is, which is super cool to, to all you people that study hard and work hard and 
that's trying to better yourselves and maybe don't have the means to ha uh, work with somebody privately. So the, I want to keep spreading the word. And uh, we also have a video course that's for sale. If you want to check it out, it's in the description link below. It's only $15 a month. It is amazing, uh, especially the, I think it's the best deal out there by far for, for any math program for the SAT. So definitely check that out if you want to. And last but not least, again, I posted a, our latest math puzzle here. I'll show it to you again. If you guys are interested in our math puzzles channel, I think we're really doing a lot of great work there. We've got some, some cool stuff here in turn. If you love problem solving and just sort of like to do math puzzles, just to keep your mind sharp, this is a great thing to check out. We j I just released this one today, so I'm going to share it again with everybody. So you can click on that link below to order of operations. And then the way it works is, you know, I present the problem and then I, I show you how to solve it and all that stuff. So you can learn, you have fun, challenge yourself, exercise your mind. And that's that. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.